Esteemed listeners of Marka Sahaba, the voice of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we welcome you to this segment where we are exclusively having an interview today and we have a special guest with us, that is our Azrat Mufti Saab, Alhamdulillah, and today we are going to be discussing Darul Iman and also what we have some breaking news from Mufti Saab, inshallah. So today, Mufti Saab, the first question is, let's first welcome our Mufti Saab. Mufti Saab, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum as wa Rahmatullahi Allahi wa barakatuh Barakallahu feekum wa zayid khan Jazakallahu khairan Mufti Sahib, with regards to Darul Iman What is the need for Darul Iman When there are so many organizations Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Nahmaduhu wa nuswalli Ala rasulihi al-kareem Amma ba'd All praise is due to Almighty Allah The sustainer, nourisher And cherisher of the universe Peace, blessings And salutations be upon our beloved master and leader Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Today is the 25th of Jumad al-Akhirah 1443 corresponding to the 28th of January 2022 Yes, Molana, you are correct that there are so many organizations in South Africa in almost every field. But I'm sure you know two dates every South African must memorize and bear heart. In April 1994, it was the 27th of April, we had our first democratic elections and it was a historic occasion for most people, obviously. Whites could vote before that, non-whites could not vote, so we all know that. Then a second historic date and very, very sadly for us and as Muslims, was 27th of March 2020 and I remember that date vividly because I slept there in the Jami Masjid next to the Masjid by Moana Hanif Bamji we didn't know what is locked down and that night I went to Hazrat Moana Mufti Ahmad Sadiq Desai up and told him please Hazrat I need this fatwa how much the people perform their Jumma Salat and this is a hard lockdown because first time in our life we were going through this and at Wednesday night as I normally go I was there by Hazrat Mufti Rizal Haqsab Hafidahullah and both of them agreed that if according to the Hanafis you have four men who are saying mature and you know that they're not Musafir and so forth so they can just perform their Jumma Salat and one can be the Imam and so forth and so on even Musafir is fine there's no problem but we know that Jumma Salat is not compulsory upon a musafir so anyway that's all academic discussion and then we know that certain groups and organizations went as friends of the court and when I was performing the Jumma Salat I think we were about 12 or 15 but under 20 people in Jami Masjid I remember the whole khutbah and Salat I was like crying and you know it was really hurting me so much and Alhamdulillah that Mawlana Mufti Ahmad Sadiq decided that he said that we must go to court and so forth and so on and mashallah our Hafiz advocate Firoz Boda senior advocate, senior counsel and mashallah then Hazrat Fatwa, my Fatwa and so forth were used and so forth and so on and then again that you know we had to make Mashura, now what nevertheless that in 2021 Now this is last year. In around February or so, we find that Mufti Hashim Bouda came here to my place here from the deer and said that Azad Mohana Ahmad Sadiq Desai Saab instructed him he should come talk to me and we must discuss this issue. Now this is where I'm coming to why the need for Darul Iman. Hazrat, you know, Hazrat Muhammad Sadiq Desai is no ordinary person. He's from the Awliyaullah. And we must recognize that his contribution, one man alone, and he stood against the apartheid regime, and the masjid still stands, and the highway and everything stopped. So this is the karamat of Hazrat, you know. And Hazrat Muhammad Masyullah Khan Sabnawar Allah Marqada, who used to say that Mulvi Ahmad Sadiq, the Mufti, 
ہستیوں کا مفتی ہے سو دا مین ہیز بین بلیس ود فراست ان سائٹ فور سائٹ اینڈ آئی سین دا سو مینی این اوکیشن سو ہی سیڈ یو نو واٹ دے ول بی مینی مینی کورٹ کیسز ان فیوچر ایز ویل سو وی نیڈ این انڈیپینڈنٹ آرگنائزیشن پیپل ہو سنک جسٹ لائک آس دیٹ وی مسٹ پروموٹ اینڈ پروٹیکٹ اینڈ پریزرو دا شریع ایٹ آل کورس اٹ ڈزنٹ میٹر ہوز ود آس ہوز اگینسٹ آس ہو کرٹیسائزز آس سو آئی ایکسپلین ٹو مفتی آشیم آئی ایم ہنڈریڈ پرسینٹ آن بورڈ یو نو سو ہی سجیسٹڈ دا نیم مفتی آشیم بودا حفیظ اللہ اینڈ سیڈ دا نیم از دار المان سو ہی واز دا امیر اینڈ سو فورس اینڈ سو آن اینڈ آئی واز ویری ہیپی آئی سیڈ واٹ ایور سروس وی کین بی دا میڈیا اینڈ سو فورس وی ول یوز دے آفٹر دے ہیڈ دے ٹریجڈی دے ایٹ دا ڈیئر دا ون استاد پاس دے وے مانا راوت صاحب دے ایٹ رحیم اللہ اینڈ دے ہیڈ اے لاٹ آف یو نو چیلنجز سو ایٹ می پلیز یو جس رن ایوری تھنگ اینڈ وی ول بی دے ٹو اسسٹ یو سو آئی سیڈ فائن اینڈ آئی کنسلٹڈ ود حضرت مولانا احمد صادق دیسائی صاحب حفیظ اللہ سو دیٹ از ہاؤ ایٹ کیم ان ٹو ایگزسٹینس دا اسٹارٹنگ واز ان فیبروری ود مشہورا اینڈ سو فورس بٹ آفیشلی وی اسٹارٹڈ لاسٹ ایئر 2021 and it was in march so just under a year now we can we know january is ending so then is february so if we take that our you know first initial meetings and so forth were in february so then it's a year approximately but if you take officially then it's march so just under a year darul iman came into existence alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and the aim of it is that it's like a more a legal wing that that wherever the need arises on national issues that we have to go to court we have to consult with our advocates attorneys senior counsel and we will bring them on board and so forth but the catalyst for it was remember that what happened when uksa and all of them went to court you know to close the masajid and to and they closed it even before the government said so so that was a real indictment you know on on them nevertheless all that everyone is aware of so that is how darul iman came to existence with this in mind and once we had azad mohan ahmed sadiq desai sahab blessings and so forth so i was very comfortable and therefore when we were preparing our website and so forth they already we said from day one we don't associate ourselves at all with uksa nor with jusa the jamiat ye in Jannes nor were the MJC day in Cape Town and nor were Darul Ehsan day in Durban and all these organizations we disassociate ourselves from them and we have absolutely nothing to do with them we are totally independent and autonomous Mufti Sahib are the lawyers directly involved in Darul Iman? 100% you must remember that we have Hafiz Firoz Bouda on board from day one and we have Zaheer Umar and his mashallah very able capable son and that is mashallah hafiz abu bakr he and he is an advocate also the here son is a hafiz and is an advocate and uh, you asking about that but you know he's one of the directors also of darul iman who are the directors of darul iman so we have yourself mona zahid khan mashallah and we have our hafiz abu bakr and that is our brother zahir Umar San, mashallah, and myself, so it's three. Allah Ta'ala loves odd numbers. Inna Allah Ta'ala witrun yuhibbul witra. So therefore we chose three, and one young person yourself, one legal eagle, and one old man, you know. So that's myself, alhamdulillah. So these are the directors of Darul Iman, and then we have other lawyers assisting and so forth. So for example we have Yusuf Dokrat, mashallah, very able, capable person then we have brother aslam mutala and he is also a senior counsel and is a advocate and so forth very very well experienced and then we have you know attorney qazi and so on and so on that they all on a consultative basis 
this, that, whatever mashura. If the need arises, so we will consult with them and so forth and so on. So like that, there are many, many lawyers who are very, very sympathetic and always available to help us and so forth. Can Mufti Sab discuss other perhaps specific objectives of Darul Iman as well? As I mentioned, the main objective is to protect and preserve the Sharia and to see what are the national issues and if we have to go to court or there has to be real, you know, arbitration and so forth and so on, then those are the type of things we definitely will challenge and so forth. It is not we don't want to get involved, you know, what the ulama organizations are doing. They do doing their inheritance, they're doing their nikah, they're doing their talaq, they're doing all the fasakh. We're not interested in all those type of things there. Ours are a very specific cause and remember that is why we need to have a good rapport and a very good understanding with our lawyers, attorneys, advocates and there's no one really in South Africa doing that because everybody got their own reservations. So another point I must make very clear that we must appreciate and you know, place on record our sincerest thanks to our esteem, esteem eagle, legal, our legal eagles and our lawyers and attorneys and advocates, they don't charge us you know, and mashallah they feel that this is for the sake of Islam, protection, preservation of Islam, whether it's our brother Zahir Umar, whether it's beloved son, Hafiz Abu Bakr, the advocate, or whether it's Hafiz Firoz Boda, or whether Yusuf Dokrat, or whether brother Aslam Mutala, senior counsel. So all of them, and we must appreciate, I mean, for them to take out their time, and all this, they are going into extra time, and burning the midnight oil, and all that, because there are deadlines sometimes to meet, and so forth. But Allah, Jalla Wala, reward them, and we really, really appreciate all their contribution, and Allah reward them and their families. We understand Mufti Sahib has breaking news, but before we get to the breaking news, Mufti Sahib, how can a person join and become a member of Darul Iman? Alhamdulillah, even last night I sent out to all the podcast groups and broadcast and so forth that how people can join Darul Iman. If any person wants to become a member of Darul Iman, it's very easy that you must just write down or memorize this number, 084 Seven eight six three one three zero zero eight four seven eight six three one three zero, and you just submit your name, your surname, your area, town, or your country. That's fine. And with that, if you want, you can add your email and so forth. So it's not necessary, but if you want to, obviously, all this will be kept confidential, and it is open to anybody, everybody, any Muslim person throughout the world. And remember, those people. Who are beyond the borders of South Africa so then it just, you can't call on this number, it's just for WhatsApp purposes, so plus 27, then 84 786 you know here yeah, at Marcus Sahaba, our number is 084, our WhatsApp number 084 so therefore we selected and chose this number to make it easy for the people to memorize only only the last digit will the fur so zero eight four seven eight six three one three zero and for foreigners and beyond the borders of South Africa plus two seven eight four seven eight six three one three oh so any Muslim person remember can join in and just give us your name and where you are from and so forth and if you want you can send an email or whatever so you must remember his details but just WhatsApp it is fine and if you want to go to our website to see what we are doing and so forth, then the website is www. So three W's dot and Darul Iman. Remember Darul Iman is with the E. D A R U L then E M double A N. So D A R U L and E M A A N dot C O dot Z A. And if you want to send us an email or something, so the email is Umma U M M A H at 
Darul Iman dot C O dot Z A. So Darul Iman, you got the spelling now. D A R U L E M A A N dot C O dot Z A. That is for emails. So Umma U M M A H at Darul Iman dot C O dot Z A and the website triple W dot Darul Iman dot Z O dot Z A. And if you want to become a member, zero eight four seven eight six three one three zero. And that is all you have to do. There's no money involved, no nothing. Everything free of charge. And mashallah, with Allah's help, everything is going well and everything is progressing well. We come to the highlight of our program and this interview, and we are all waiting anxiously. Mufti Sab, what is the breaking news that Mufti Sab wants to share with us today? Remember, inshallah, we won't speak too much about it now, but you will get everything after the Jumma Salat and so forth. What had happened was that we saw so much information going out from JUSA and yeah, Johannesburg Jamiat and you know the Jamiat in Fordsburg and definitely some of it was misrepresentation, some of it totally false, some of it total lies, you know. So we discussed it with our senior senior uh, advocates, attorneys and so forth and they said yes, somebody has to take action. So I said Darul Iman is for that person purpose and then after much mashura and so forth so mashallah that our attorneys then they wrote a letter and to them an email and this was last week Friday and you know we told them that see this is what you wrote you said that you know, to the daily their spokesperson said to the daily maverick that they closed the mosque one day before the lockdown which we know is an absolute lie because their own pamphlets are showing four or five days days before that and they know that they closed the mosque before that so I mean this is totally false and then we know about that to the mail and guardian it was said that uh, you know one person is in charge is a representative of two million Muslims I mean that is a gross exaggeration and a, to me my opinion a total lie and false you know and then we see that in the letter written to Karachi and Pakistan and so forth so regarding the masjid there that they want to demolish, there it's written that, you know, their fatwas are binding on all the Muslims, basically, of South Africa. I mean, that is a laughable statement, you know, mm. and this type of things here. There's no one mufti organization in South Africa who can say that their fatwas are binding. To me, most of the fatwas, we will say, are not even worth the paper on which they are written, you know, from Uksa and Jusa and all these type of things. So, I mean, that is our stance on this issue here. And then, this say they represent all the theological bodies. So these are serious, serious, you know, must representation and you must remember, must leading to the ummah and so forth. So we had to do something. So mashallah, our attorney wrote a letter to them and sent the email last week Friday around 11.30 it was sent before Jumu'ah and in there it was mentioned that within seven days we expect the response. Last night I spoke to the attorney at eight o'clock to be exact and he said so far no acknowledgement and so far no reply no response from them so I asked him what does he suggest he said leave it till Jumma and after Jumma then you send everything out and then the public can see that who is on the haq on the truth and who is on batil on falsehood and who is taking the ummah for a ride and who is misrepresenting and for giving the government and the public and so forth, false information. So, I mean, you can be the judge and so forth. And we gave them so many options. You will read in that letter. I don't want to divulge everything. They must do one or two or three or whatever. So all that is mentioned there. But never mind that. They never even acknowledged the letter till last night. So we don't know what will happen today. But remember, whatever happens, inshallah, we will still send it out, inshallah, after Jumu'ah. And we you take a good omen. Tafa'ul. You see, when you study Surah 62, Surah Tul Jumu'ah, verse 9. You know, I finished the Quran Sharif thrice with Allah's help, Allah's mercy. Adam in, on A, I'm speaking about Adam in Fadli Rabbi. And to the Bishu Sulaiman alayhi salam, Adam rahmatum mi Rabbi. So as Zulqarnain said, Rahima 
Tahammullah. So then I always try and finish in Ramadan. So I started in 2001, then 2009 I finished with Allah's help the first time. Second time 2014, and then the third time 2019. So with Allah's help and Allah's mercy, so all this happened. So now we're busy again, mashallah. Allah Jalla Allah make it easy. So, and so I told that no, what we will do after mashura and discussion. So we said, fine, after Jumu'ah, Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib Rahimullah wrote that people who want to open a business or they want to do some, you know, uh, ventures, business ventures and what have you. So we don't say it is sunnah or something, but you can say it's mustahab and you will say it's tafa'ul, a good omen. So surah number, remember, 62 and verses 9 and 10. So in verse 9, Allah Ta'ala states, Ya yuwalladzina amanu nidha nudiya lissalati mi yawmil jumu'ah fasaw ila zikrillah. So when the first adhan goes, then for example adhan is quarter past 12, day in Durban or 20 past, 25 past 12, up past 12 here. So that time then, before that already we should be now closing our shops, our businesses and hastening, leave everything else and go ila zikrillah wadarul bay. So that's a command from Almighty Allah. Then Surah 62 verse 10 فَإِذَا قُدْيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ So when the Jummah Salat is finished and so forth, you disperse on the earth and then you seek the grace of Almighty Allah and وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا So we seek the grace of Allah so after Jummah, inshallah, we will release it. The document is 100% ready. I've got it by me. And inshallah, then we will release it and the whole public and we let it go viral worldwide inshallah al-aziz wadhkurullaha kathir allah allakum tuflihun so in that way you will be successful so therefore we chose the time also so mashallah so make dua we ask and uh, our listeners that you also make dua almighty allah jalla wala always grant us ikhlas and sincerity istiqamat and steadfastness and kabuliyat and acceptance in this court dear what our iman islam these are the most important ingredients for success in this world and in the year after. Mufti Sab, did Jusa or MJC ever come forward to contact Mufti Sab and discuss issues? 100% you must remember that especially after the masjid, you know, two events happened. Just closing the masjid, the mosque, you know, because they are non-Muslim listeners. And uh, to go to court as friends of the court is unprecedented in human history. Remember that. It's unprecedented in human history. Nowhere in the world it happened that Molvi, sheikhs, imams, ulama, they went to court to close the mosque and so forth. And so many organizations went, you know, an absolute disgrace. So remember, we're very, very disappointed about that. And when we tell them that they must apologize, they try and justify it as well. Inna lillahi wa Then after that, instead of of learning from that, then that was 2020, that was the most budget, then 2021 last year, that regarding the Muslim marriages, well, and all the related issues and so forth. So you must remember that what happened is that again they went, were the fee ladies council or legal council, whatever it is, so we say were the lesbians, you understood? Because according to them, lesbian is 100% legal, according to the legal organization and so forth. So in South Africa, for them, gay business is permissible and lesbianism is permissible. So we just call them the lesbian group and finish to make people understand this. So what a disgrace that is. So these two incidents, I told MJ, and this week here, I sent out a letter that when I was in uh, December day in Cape Town, our graduates from Darloom, Newcastle, invited me and they told me that you must come for the Jalsa Bukhari Khatam. So MJC objected on them, why did you call AK and so forth? So I said fine, that, that we will prepare the answer, I'll give you all the voice notes, and then you send it out on your letterhead, they sent it out so I asked them why you're delayed, they said no, they want holiday and so forth I said fine, so we sent it out it's gone viral, and I said tell MJC, does not you understand, apologize for the closure of the masjid, surah 2 verse 114, you can see what is happening to them 
لهم في الدنيا خزيهم ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم. so whether it is Jusa, Jusa also sent me messages not once, several times with various people. I said no, same standard answer. you must clarify these three points. we got hundred points, but clarify these three. number one, why did you go as friends of the court to close the mosque? so and you know the consequences. لهم في الدنيا خزيو ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم. For them is humiliation and disgrace in this worldly life. You can see what's happening to them. And remember a terrible, horrible punishment in the year after. And remember then they went with the legal, women's legal center and so forth. So anyway, we just say lesbian group finish. So, you know, this big name, that women's legal center and what have you. So the point here is this, that you went with them regarding the Muslim marriages bill or whatever bill you want to call it. So in this case here, do you know what you are doing? That tomorrow on the day of justice, remember the hadith is authentic in Muatta Malik, that people will come to Mustafa Habibuna Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for house for water from Hauze Kosar. And then the angels will say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habibana Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these people Ghayaru Dina Kabadak. They change the religion of Islam after you. Habibuna Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be so furious and will tell such people people get out from here suhqan suhqa fa suhqan suhqa get out go from here bu'dan bu'da imagine what a plight that will be allah protect us allah protect our iman protect our islam our ikhlas our istiqamah make our khatim on iman closing the masjid trying to fiddle with the sharia to just bootleg the government or organizations and so forth so this is apne iman ko this is to put your iman right. You must remember on thin, you're skating on thin ice. Allah forbid it mustn't happen. You go right out to the fall of Islam. So we said the two times you went as friends of the court, you must apologize publicly. Then we can talk. And the third one also must be done publicly. What is your stance? Whether it is Darul Ihsan, whether it is you might, and Darul Ihsan also must apologize. They also part of this mess. And remember Jusa and Musa and whoever. Musa is, but this is not Musa. Jusa and Musa came out by mistake. So Jusa and MJC, I wanted to say. So Musa came out. So Jusa, you must remember and MJC. So they all must apologize. And what's their stance on the Shias? They also, you must remember, they will tell you, you had your own experience with them. You know better. So they will tell you, no, we'll speak in private. And what is there to speak in private. When people curse, you must remember the Sahaba. When people say Mut'a, I've been to Iran. They gave me so many books. I got over 100 books. All their books and I challenged them. I beat them in Iran with Allah's help. That's Safiullah. They were witness to it and here also we debated live on the radio. We defeated them. So remember, 100% Kufar the Shias are. But these people, MJC and Jusa and this one and so forth so they don't prepare to say that publicly why money speaks all languages so these are the objections we raise with them so we say no I'll never meet you till you make your stance clear and you apologize for the ummah we all make mistakes we all are sinners none of us are perfect so if we committed a crime or a sin privately you make toba privately mm-hmm. when the crime is committed publicly then it's imperative compulsory mandatory upon you to make Tawbah publicly but they don't take us serious so we say now they will take us serious now and let me put one more thing here before the time finishes one Molvi, one Mufti Sahab of Deyaz Wallahi that he phoned me 12 times already you understand I won't take his name for now so you must, then I had to tell them that see if you're going to go on like this I'll take your name on the radio and you'll be very very ashamed of what will happen to you so that they were really and are really in panic panic mode you must remember this because they know once this letter is going to be released then we're not going to stop there we'll still take the process further I mean we don't have to cut
carry favor. I told you a hundred times. We don't carry favor with any person, any politician, any organization, or any government. So we will take it forward. I'm in consultation with our lawyers, and inshallah, February, March, before Ramadan, it will go to another level. We will escalate it, inshallah, because we cannot allow Islam to be hijacked and so forth. Mm. Islam kisi ki bab nahi, masjid kisi ki khandan ki nahi. Islam, it don't belong to some father or some fam- family members. Islam is Allah's deen. We have to say we will give our life for Islam. We will give our life for our masajid. We will give our life for the protection of Sahaba. That is what Islam demands from us. Not all these politicians carrying favor here and polishing this one shoes and boot licking and so forth. We don't want people like that. We don't want to associate with them because Quran says once you associate with such people in nakum idam misluhum then you become just like them so that is our stance and we're very clear on that and alhamdulillah I discussed it again this week here with Hazrat Mufti Ahmad Sadiq Desai Hafidullah we discussed it again this week with Mufti Hashim Bouda and our attorneys and advocates and senior counsel and we all on the same page may Allah muwafiq Allah grant us tawfiq that we take this first and Allah Ta'ala grant us success, supreme success in this world and in the year after. Jazakallah khair to you, Mawazahid Khan. Make dua for us on this Mubarak day. Allah grant us kamiyabi success. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim. Wa arina manasikana wa tubalayna inna kanta tawabu rahim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun. Wa salamun al mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen, ameen, ya rabbil. We say Jazakumullah khairan to Mufti Sahib and to all our listeners of Merkaz Sahaba, the voice of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And we end off this program, the breakfast show, inshallah.